Today, I'll show you how to create a snow drift building up at the bottom of your screen using the Auto In Between feature in OpenTunes. Hello friends, and today I want to show you how I use the Auto In Between feature in OpenTunes to create this growing snow drift animation to go along with the snowstorm effect that I made last week. And this was for a Christmas live stream from a few weeks ago. And I'll have a link to that in the card above and in the description below. So to create the impression of snow building up, you could just draw a filled shape and then use the animate tool to move it upwards. So to do that, first we change the background colour of the camera so we can see where the snow's going. And we do that in the scene menu, scene settings, and then select the background colour image and then choose a dark colour and just close that. And then on a vector level, choosing the geometry shape, the rectangle shape with auto fill, change the colour to white, then zooming out I'll put on a large filled rectangle. And then using the control points editor, holding the control key, I'd add some control points in here and then adjust this to create some curves. And then using the animate tool you can just move the snow upwards into the scene. And that could look perfectly fine for your animation. But I also wanted to have the snow shape build up more in some places and less in others, like a snow drift. And look less mechanical than just moving upwards. And you can do this by drawing it by hand but I decided that I'd make use of the tweening feature to have the snow grow and change shape at the same time. And I've already shown in another tutorial how to use the tween function and you might want to watch that later for more tips. So I'll add the link to that in the description, but let me show you quickly how to do it here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll remove this shape by selecting it with the selection tool and then just pressing delete. So I want to show this snow drift over the top of Tahoma and my other stream panels as I animate. So I took a screenshot from last week's stream and saved it to disk. And first I'll drop this image into Tahoma. So from an explorer window I'll just click and drag that PNG image and drag it into Tahoma. And then we can choose to import or load the drawing. And if you choose import it'll copy that image into the project folder. So then I can delete this image from my temp folder. So now I can see what I'll be covering up with the snow so I can make sure I don't cover up too much of the interface. So I'll place that column behind the snow. And I've already added a vector level for the snow. And it has to be a vector level because auto in betweening can only work on vector levels. So first I'll add the shape of the full snow drift at its full height. And as I've mentioned in other tutorials, to make a filled shape consistently fill and remain filled, you drop in a closed shape and edit it. So, back to the geometry tool. With the rectangle selected and auto fill selected, the colour is white. I'll just draw a rectangle. And again, I'll edit it using the control point editor. So select that, select the shape. If I zoom in a little bit, I can then drag the corner points that I've already got to where I want them and then holding the control key I can add an extra point along the shape and then click and drag to change the curve of that point. And I don't want to block out too much of the interface but I do want to be able to notice the change. So I'll make the snow quite large and I can always come back later and go through this process again which is very quick to do. And rather than the snow being plain white, I'd like to add a little texture to it. So I'll fill it with a vector gradient. So I'll select a new palette entry, the vector tab, and then I'll choose the linear gradient option. And to be able to see the gradient as I edit it, I'll fill in the shape with it by using the fill tool and just hitting fill. And we can see already the gradient moves from left to right. I want it going top to bottom. So in the settings tab, we change the angle to be 90 degrees or you can click and type in the angle box. So now the colours change from top to bottom and if we remove the smoothness altogether by dragging that to the left I can adjust the Y position 
to adjust the height of where the gradient is. So let's make that smooth again and change the colour to go from a white at the peak to a bluey grey colour down below. And next we'll remove the outline because the outline is plain white and you can see it's standing out against the gradient. So go to the first white colour and then bring down the alpha. And that removes that. So now we've got the height of the snowdrift, we need to create the lowest part of the snowdrift. And to have two shapes to morph between, a start and end shape, you need to have the same number of control points. And duplicating a drawing is the best way to do this. So this is drawing number one, and we can select on the drawing and press the D key, or if you right click, you can choose duplicate drawing from the context menu. So now we've got two drawings, both exactly the same. And then if we adjust drawing number one to be the lowest point for the snow. So I've got the snow showing in two drawings. So we want the snow to rise from the first drawing to the second drawing in small steps. And to do that, we need to use the level strip. And you might have this already in your room, but if not, you can open it from the panels menu into Homer or Windows menu in OpenTunes and choose level strip and here with this vector level selected you can see the two drawings and we just need to insert a number of blank drawings between these two for the program to add the tween drawings into and to work out how many to add I know the snowstorm will run for 10 minutes so if I show a new drawing every minute I'll need 10 drawings in total if I show two drawings a minute I'll need 20 and so on so for my first guess at how many drawings to add, I'll show a new drawing every 10 seconds. So that's 6 drawings a minute, or 60 drawings over those 10 minutes. And then we'll see how that looks, and I can always delete and re-add the tweens afterwards. So I've already got 2 drawings, so I'll need another 58. So with the final drawing selected, I just tap the insert key another 58 times. And then I just need to highlight all of these drawings by selecting the first one, moving to the end, holding shift and selecting the last. And now because I've got a number of drawings selected and I'm on a vector level, the in-between option is shown on these drawings here. So I'll click any one of these in-between buttons. And then it's asked you to choose the interpolation type. And it probably doesn't matter too much which you choose, but I'll choose ease in and ease out as the snowstorm will start and stop gently but to be honest no one will notice this as it's moving so slowly so in this instance i could probably have chosen any of them so i'll press in between and then open tunes interpolates between those drawings so now they're all selected i can just click and drag all 60 of them onto the timeline so i'll place them after the first two drawings and I'll delete those two drawings and drag those in place. And then I'll hit play and see how that looks. But after the snowstorm finishes, I want this snow to melt away, ready to repeat later. So if I highlight all the frames by clicking anywhere on the top of this bar here on the timeline, that highlights all 60 drawings. And then I right click and I choose Edit Cell Numbers, Swing. And then it'll duplicate all those 60 drawings in reverse. So I've shown the drawing numbers here. You'll see it goes from drawing 1 through to 60 and then back down to 1 again. So if I play that, the snow will rise up and then melt away again. So the final thing to do is to space out the timing of this to match the 10 minute snowstorm. And because the drawings are changing so infrequently, 6 times a minute, it'll be excessive to have the animation play at 24 frames a second. So if I make the frames per second the lowest it can be, that's 1 frame per second, and we'll change this in the scene settings by typing 1 in the frame rate box and then close that dialog. That'll automatically change the viewer to play at one frame per second as well. And then to space out the timing to match the 10 minute snowstorm. And if you remember, 
I've got 60 drawings to show over 10 minutes. That's six drawings per minute, which is 10 seconds of drawing. So to do that, we'll select the first 60 drawings. And to make each one last 10 seconds, if you right click and go to reframe, and we don't want it on ones, twos, threes or fours, so we'll choose the other option, which is reframe with empty in-betweens. And the name's a little bit misleading because we don't want to consider empty in-betweens, but select it anyway. And here we can choose the number of frames to show each drawing for. So that's 10 steps, so each drawing lasts 10 frames, and leave the empty in-betweens at zero, and it won't add any in-betweens. It'll just space out the drawings at 10 frames each. So click OK. And if we go to the first frame, you'll see each drawing lasts for 10 seconds before it shows the next one. And then I want to hold the snow drift at the highest part for a minute before it starts to melt. So if we go to drawing number 60, that's currently held for 10 drawings. And again on the right frame, right click, reframe with empty in-betweens. And at one frame per second, this wants to be held for 60 frames. We've already got 10, so we'll put that to 50 steps hit OK and that will now be held for one minute and then afterwards the snow will start to melt and I want that to happen over a shorter period and I think five minutes might be OK so again we'll highlight all of these drawings and then right click reframe with empty in-betweens I want each drawing to be held this time just for five frames and hit OK and that'll last for five minutes in total. And then before the snowstorm starts again, I'll hold the last frame for another five minutes. So if I delete all but one of those drawings, and then right click on drawing number one, reframe with empty in-betweens, and at one frame per second for five minutes, that's 60 frames for one minute, so 300 frames for five minutes. So hit OK. So that runs on for another five minutes. So that's it for this snow drift. So now I'll just add in a couple of more snow drifts here on the right hand side next to the camera and on top of the camera. And I'll add those for the same timing and that'll be this part of the overlay complete. Now make each new snow drift on a new vector level and that also allows me to use the animate tool on an individual column to adjust the spacing of the snow drift if it needs to move to a slightly different place. So I'll just add those now. And this is how it looked on the stream when I combined it with a snowstorm that I built last week. And adding the snow drift and even the snow was probably unnecessary, but a lot of fun putting it together. And knowing how to use the tweening feature gave me the option to make this animation that I would never have drawn by hand. So have a go at tweening so that you've got it in your animation arsenal when you need it. It really will come in handy at the strangest of times, but you'll be pleased that you knew how to do it. And that's a very snowy guarantee.